In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at uh, uh, limits and when they exist and some examples of when they don't exist too. So we're going to start with a couple of graphical examples on, uh, on this page and the next, and then take a look at a more algebraic one on the last page, the third page. So first of all, in this page, we have this uh, graph of this parabola, uh, and the it's the function f of x equals x squared plus 1. And what we're talking about is what happens to the graph as x becomes close to 1. So as says, as x approaches 1, x squared plus 1 approaches. Uh, the arrow means gets close to or approaches. So x is 1 here, and these two green arrows represent as we're getting close to where x is 1 from the left or getting close to where x is 1 from the right. And so we're going to write here, um, so this is called the left-hand limit, representing that green arrow there. And so it says the limit as x approaches a value of 1, and that negative means from the left side or below 1. It does not refer to the number negative 1. So this is, this is called the left-hand limit. So as we get close to uh, from below 1, uh, uh, if we go along the curve here, notice we're getting close to having a y value or a function value of 2. And so that means that the left-hand limit would be 2. Uh, as x approaches 1, we're getting close to having a y value of 2. Now the right-hand limit looks like this, as x approaches 1 from above or the right side. So as we approach from the right side of 1 or above 1, uh, notice that we're also getting close to having a y value of 2 as you get close to that point. So this would also equal 2. Now as long as those two numbers are the same, then we would say that x squared plus 1 is also approaching this value of 2, the same as these. And we write mathematically that the limit as x approaches 1, notice there's no minus or plus sign here anymore, the limit as x approaches 1 of this uh, x squared plus 1 function is equal to 2. As long as these two values are the same thing, then that's what the limit will be. So that's what it looks like when the limit does exist. And I'm going to get rid of this graph here and draw a very similar graph. But instead of, and you might see this sometimes, sometimes you see kind of odd functions in, in the calculus course. So in this one, the... Uh, the, the point 1 comma 2 doesn't actually exist, exist on the graph. So this is an open circle, meaning the point 1, 2 isn't actually on here. Um, when x is 1, the function value is actually 5. So if we get this 1, 5 point up here. And the limit from the left-hand side would still be 2. The limit from the right-hand side would still be 2. It doesn't matter if that function value is 5 there, uh, some other point. Uh, as long as the left and right hand limits are the same thing, then the limit still exists there, even if the function has some other different value. So flipping over to the, uh, the next page, so this is called a piecewise function because it, and it, it, because it has different parts to it, different pieces. And where x is 2, the, the function actually has a jump in the graph. So we come along here, we're getting close to where x is 2. Uh, the, the y value is actually 2 as well there. And then as soon as you get to uh, having an x value bigger than 2, it jumps from this point. See, the point 2, 2 is on the graph. That's what the solid circle means. And it jumps up here. And so if x is a little bit bigger than 2, then we've got uh, function values bigger than 3, and we continue merrily along that straight line up here. So there's a break in the graph here. So we're going to talk about the left and right-hand limits at 2. So for the left-hand limit, as we approach a value of 2 on the x on x for x, then the, the y value is getting close to the number 2 also. So we would write the uh, left-hand limit is 2. Now for the right-hand limit, we're talking about what happens as x approaches 2 from above 2. So we're coming down here, getting close to a x value of 2. So as we come down here, I'm getting pretty close to having an x value of 2 here. And the y value is pretty is approaching a value of 3. So we would say the right-hand limit is 3. Now those two limits are different. The left and right-hand limits are not the same. And so we would say that the limit of this function as x approaches 2 does not exist because the left and right-hand 
when you're coming from the two different sides, the limit isn't the same. Now, sometimes you'll see this abbreviated as DNE or does not exist. So those two actually mean the same thing. Uh, last page, we're going to take a look at some algebraic um, examples here of when limits exist or don't exist. So the first one here, we're taking the limit of 8 over x as x approaches 0. Well, as x approaches 0, so if we could actually substitute 0 in place of x, we would, eight we would have 8 divided by 0. Well, what's 8 divided by 0? Let's, let's talk about a, another example before we get into dividing by 0. So let's say we had 8 divided by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4 because 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 8 or 2 times 4 equals 8. It takes 4 2's to make 8. So division is figure out how many of these do we have to add up to give you this number here. And see if we're dividing by 0 we could add zeros up forever but we'll never ever, ever get up to 8. And some people might say, well, you know, th th this should actually be infinity. Okay, but infinity isn't a specific number. Like, you can't, if we add up an infinite number of zeros, we still don't get to 8. Okay, so is, infinity isn't some particularly large number. It's more a concept of it's the the largest value possible. Okay, so it's some incredibly large value, no specific number, it's more of a concept than a number. So we wouldn't say that that limit is infinity. We would say that the limit doesn't exist because there are no numbers of zero, number of zeros that we could ever add up to give you the number 8. So that limit isn't infinity, but we would say it does not exist. Now in the second example here, let's say we were finding the limit as x tends towards negative 3 of this uh, 6x plus 1 over x plus 3 rational expression. So if we substitute negative 3 in place of x here, the denominator value would be 0. The numerator isn't though. Uh, 6 times negative 3 is negative 18 plus 1 would be negative 17. So we would have negative 17 divided by 0. And by the same rationale as over here, there are no number of zeros that we could ever add up to give you negative 17. Okay, there, you, there are no number of them that we could possibly add up. So uh, let's get rid of that. So again, this one would not exist. If we were substituting some number besides negative 3 in place of x, for example, let's say 2. Let's say x is approaching 2. Well, we can actually evaluate that. 2 plus 3 is 5 in the denominator. 6 times 2 is 12 plus 1 is 13. So the limit would exist and it would be 13 fifths because we can evaluate that. Okay, uh, The don't exist come when you're dividing by 0 because you're not able to divide by 0. And that's the end of the tutorial.